couple of days ago I uh, dropped my hawk pick in a drain at a petrol station and I was kind of disturbed as uh, they're relatively expensive picks and uh, they sort of have some sentimental value to me. So I uh, ordered these 15 inch tweezers and what I wanted to tell you was that I went to the petrol station out of hours and was able to sort of stealthily and sort of like a sleuth I was able to go in there under the cover of darkness while the petrol station was closed and get into that little drain and by pump six by that drain I was able to sort of scoop the pick back out with these massive tweezers and I was gonna return triumphantly to the channel and you know we were gonna all kind of celebrate together what really happened was that I uh, turned up to the petrol station there were cones across so I turned my lights out and drove around and uh, I thought I was free and clear and then a staff member a member of staff appeared at the door and he was like are you alright so I got out of the car with this in my hand which probably looked like a knife and I said it's okay I'm not not mental I'm here to pick up a guitar pick and he said oh you're the guy with the guitar pick and I said well sort of I don't have the guitar pick it's over there um, I'm here to retrieve it anyway I was slightly embarrassed um, but it turned out they were fine they'd heard all about me and they knew about my guitar pick woes and I pointed out where it was and I shone a torch on it they offered to hold the camera I said that won't be necessary mate uh, and then I reached in and the good news is I've got my hawk pick back uh, so I can thoroughly recommend these 15 inch tweezers if ever you need to grab something out of a drain um, that's my story thank you for checking that out um, while we're on this absolute high maybe you want to like and subscribe uh, plenty of stuff on this channel if you're into guitar picks and stuff it's if you can get it, get it, why not? <laughs> take a photo. <laughs> okay, sweet. So now that that's out of the way, if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, that'd be really cool. On this channel, there's a bunch of guitar-based stuff. Uh, most of it, I guess, is aimed at sort of either just me improvising and playing guitar, or trying to show you something that helped me, or that I've just discovered, or that I think you'll find interesting or that I myself found interesting. So today's Monday and that generally means that I'll show you a lick. Uh, today I wanted to show you sort of three licks and these were some of the earliest jazz kind of transcriptions if you like that I did. Um, they're from Herbie Hancock's tune Maiden Voyage and the first solo on the tune is taken by a saxophonist called George Coleman and I remember hearing this solo and thinking, uh, well, that sounds super pretty, all of it. Um, for me, this is kind of one of the my favourite Herbie Hancock tunes. Um, and I think doesn't stray into the realms of too out there jazz, if that's a thing. It's pretty restrained, even though it's doing this modal thing. So... tune is basically made up of these sus chords that move around and I want to talk to you about these three licks that happen um, and just show you how I play them um, I use them basically for this week I'm going to be using them as a way to try and kind of get some more fluency in my alternate picking as that's kind of a sound in jazz which I really like it's like these cleanly picked alternate picked lines um, so the 
the first lick happens over that chord. I'm thinking of this as like a B flat Dorian kind of line or an A flat major or um, that kind of thing. So we start off with this chromatic. There's not really an easy way to pick that and make it sound kind of fluid. So I play that part legato. It's one of my kind of favorite, I guess you might call it bebop lines. at the top and that which is basically just going through the scale pentatonic a bit more chromaticism mixture of chromaticism and you're gonna have to sort of think outside the box when you've got that kind of and that's why I end up incorporating some slides it's a saxophone line so naturally these kind of lines don't necessarily fall so cleanly on guitar which is what I think kind of makes them work quite nicely when you do eventually figure out how to play them. So I'm alternate picking it once I get past the... So that's the lick one that I think would be worth checking out. Uh, quite tricky to play cleanly fast and basically so you could use that in like a Dorian context so if you're playing a B flat Dorian or an E flat Mixolydian um, then the second lick that I really like follows straight out of that So for this lick, um, I'm thinking of B major or C sharp Dorian. And again we've got that same thing going on where you're reaching for chromatic notes where starting that with an upstroke 
to get the kind of downbeat sound. Um, so that's that last lick and then the third lick which I really like again happens straight over and this would work over like a G major, D dominant, A minor. So starting with a chromatic on the upstroke. Another chromatic. Actually, I think I might start with a downstroke and not pick the second note. It's the way that feels most natural to me. So, starting on that B flat, approaching the third of the G. So I might try to fit these licks into other tunes once you've got them under your fingers sufficiently. Yeah, those are some of my favourite licks. The first ones that I transcribed, um, George Coleman's solo from Maiden Voyage. Check it out. Um, also, the tabs for this will be up on my Patreon if you want them. But hopefully that was interesting. And as always, start these off slowly um, and build up the speed. That's what I'm going to be doing this week. Maybe use them as warm-ups. But hopefully that's vaguely interesting. And those are three of my favourite licks, the first ones that I ever kind of transcribed. And yeah, thanks for watching.